Nearly a third of people admitted to hospital with COVID had abnormalities in multiple organs five months on. That's according to a new study which found that those who were treated in hospital for the virus showed higher rates of damage to the lungs, brain and kidneys compared to those who were not infected. The report's author, Dr Betty Rahman, says that they also found that severe infections impacted sufferers' mental health as well. Well, joining me now is Sarah Barley McMullen, who suffers from long COVID. Sarah, good of you to talk to us on Sky News today. Uh, what do you make of this report's findings? I think, uh, sorry, hi Sam. I think the Seymour um, um, uh, research study is is excellent, and it's it's great to have that kind of empirical da data about that particular demographic of people with long COVID. Um, however, there are so many other populations that, that also have long COVID that weren't hospitalised. Um, and I, I, I'm, I feel quite strongly that there needs to be a lot more research for children, young people and adults who have long COVID um, that needs to be picked up by, by the media and acknowledged by the government as well. Yeah, so it's a start, what you're saying, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you were not hospitalised, were you? And yet, two years on, what is your situation, Sarah? So, 32 months on, um, I, uh, I had to um, take ill health retirement from, from work. I worked at a university uh, last year, and I was very lucky because I was able to uh, qualify for uh, my ill health um, pension. So I, I'm now a pensioner. Um, I, I've got my, my voice box has partially collapsed. You can probably hear that with my voice. I've got problems with my lungs. Um, I've got cognitive issues that have been likened to mild brain damage. And I've also um, um, developed a um, an autoimmune uh, condition called Sjogren's, which means that I, I haven't been able to cry since I first caught COVID um, 32 months ago. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot going on, uh, really. Uh, and, Goodness. And I think, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, that, that, that is a lot to learn, uh, to adapt, to live with, isn't it? And, and your COVID infection, was it, it wasn't severe enough for you to be in hospital, so you would have had no uh, foresight that no. this would be you 32 months on? No, none at all. And actually, friends around me were much more unwell than I was. I, I had uh, an ambulance out... Uh, once during an evening when my blood oxygen was was quite low, but 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 that was it. And really, I, I just never got better. Um, and and I think that's that's what we need the government and and other people to to be talking about. Really, I you know I I have so many hospital appointments, and I, I'm part of a brilliant uh, long COVID hub in um, in Derbyshire. Um, and I've got, I completely forgot what I was going to say. I'm really, oh, yeah, I, I had an appointment um, in, in my GP surgery last, last week, and I was the only one wearing a mask. And, you know, people might, might forgive that, but there is, uh, you know, a couple of new variants around, one that's got over 30 new mutations. And it wasn't just for me that there weren't any people wearing masks. There was also no messaging around so the, the government isn't enabling the NHS in primary care or secondary care to really get a hold of the messaging that, that needs to be out there. People need to know that the emergency of, of, long co of COVID is over. But living with COVID doesn't mean we, we ignore the fact that it's there because it, it does so much damage. One in 10 infections, that's not one in 10 people, but one in 10 infections can cause long COVID. And, and, and that... That really destroys people's lives. Thousands and thousands of people died, and that was that was a hideous thing to, to sit by and watch. But thousands and thousands of people with long COVID lives have been broken, and you yeah. know, my and, wife is now my carer. Uh, yeah, it's it's very uh, stark when we hear you uh, tell us that that is the reality of your life. You were mentioning that you do get treated in the long COVID clinic. Yeah. Um, there were a number of those 
set up? I mean, has, has the provision for your treatment been, been adequate? Um, um, I think bearing in mind that they, they and, and they still don't know, they being the NHS really, what long COVID looks like. We know it's not respiratory. Um, we, we know it's vascular. So we know it can damage almost any organ. And, I, you know, I know people that have been unable to walk as a consequence. So from my point of view, um, the Derbyshire Clinic has done brilliantly. I also sit on the National Task Force um, for Long COVID. Um, and and there, are, there are over a, a 90, I think, uh, long COVID hubs around um, England. Um, and and they're, they're all doing as, as much as they can with what they have. But what they don't have is the backing, the visible backing of the government who enables them to, to get the message out there really clearly that anybody can get long COVID and it can destroy your life. A lot of... Um, I, I, I speak at, at conferences as often as I can, and I work with a, an associate professor at the University of Derby called Mark Fari, who does some amazing um, research by involving patients uh, with long COVID. Um, and, um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so there is a lot of work being done out there, what you're saying, um, Sarah, but you would like to see more of a focus on long COVID as it affects wider groups of people. Um, we're out of time, I'm afraid, but thank you so much for sharing the reality of your life and what it's been like the last 32 months uh, with us here on Sky News. Thank you. Thanks, Sam.